Hello, my name is Brian Fritz, and this is the first installment of Archaeology X. The first people to live in Pennsylvania came here nearly 16,000 years ago during the end of the last ice age. Archaeologists call these people the Paleo Indians. Paleo Indian sites with good archaeological preservation are difficult to find. Why is that? In the year 2000, my dad and I were walking through an abandoned farm field along Stony Creek River, just over that hill. My dad bent over and he picked something up and he said, what is this? I looked at it and I said, that's a Paleo Indian flirted point. And he calmly said, I thought so. As we were walking out of the field that day, I told my dad jokingly, you know, if I bop you over the head and leave you here, no one will ever know that I didn't find that point. I grew up here on our family farm in Somerset County. Occasionally we would find Indian arrowheads as we worked the fields. It was about this time National Geographic published their first Americans issue. In the cover of this issue there was this beautiful photograph of Paleo Indian stone tools lying in the snow. For a 13 year old farm boy, and I suspect for many archaeologists, the, this image on National Geographic fueled this romantic idea of these first Americans entering a new world and struggling to survive in the harsh Ice Age conditions. It was about this same time the Somerset Chapter of the Society for Pennsylvania Archaeology published a little booklet titled Some Paleo Indian Artifacts from Somerset County. What this meant is that the Paleo Indians were right here in Somerset County where I lived. I scoured all over our farm fields looking for that fluted point that I was just certain had to be here somewhere. More recently, Stan Lance and Gary Fogelman published their Fluted Point Survey of Pennsylvania. This book documents over 800 Fluted Points that were found in nearly every county across the state. In addition, the Pennsylvania Archaeological Site Survey records over 300 Paleo Indian sites. What these surveys show is that Paleo Indians were ubiquitous across Pennsylvania. Most of these Paleo Indian sites, however, are located in upland settings where the plow and cultivation have turned the soils for 150 to 200 years. Only three sites have been archaeologically excavated in Pennsylvania that contain Paleo-Indian remains within stratified sediments. Most famous is the Meadowcroft Rock Shelter located near Avella in southwestern Pennsylvania. Also well known is the Shawnee Mini Sink site located along the Delaware River in eastern Pennsylvania. Less well known is the Wallace site located in central Pennsylvania along the Susquehanna River. So why are there so few stratified Paleo-Indian sites? Retired Carnegie Museum archaeologist Stan Lance once suggested that the reasons for so few stratified Paleo-Indian sites is that they are simply deeply buried and hard to find. More recent work by archaeologists and geologists suggest that there is a geological filter at play. The idea is that Paleo-Indians camped along rivers like later cultures did, but because these sites are so old, the streams and rivers had lots of opportunity to migrate their channels back and forth across the river bottoms and erode these older sites. Some archaeological testing that I conducted along the Clarion River found evidence of old soils. Samples collected for AMS dating and OSL dating found that these soils date to the end of the last ice age and during the period when Paleo-Indians were living across the state. What this suggests is that old sediments dating to the Paleo-Indian period may exist along our rivers, but we simply have not identified them. If so, then maybe Stan Lance was right all along. The Paleo-Indian sites are simply deeply buried and hard to find. The problem with deeply buried sites is that deep archaeological testing needed to find them is very labor-intensive and very costly to do. In 2007, Bill Black in the Venango chapter of the Society for Pennsylvania Archaeology were excited about the prospects of finding the location of Fort Michal. Fort Michal was one of four forts built by the French as part of their claim to western Pennsylvania and to maintain Fort Duquesne at Pittsburgh. The remains of Fort Michal were believed to be located in a residential area within the city of Franklin, PA. Instead of doing traditional archaeological test pits and trenches, we decided to conduct a bucket auger survey. We laid out long transects across the homeowner's lawns, and every five meters we dug a three and a quarter inch hole. 
As we removed the soil from the auger holes, we recorded the soil properties, but more importantly, we screened all the soil. It was surprising the number of artifacts that we found within a three and a quarter inch hole. The auger survey returned a wealth of information about the soils and the landform. We were able to delineate a former stream channel filled in with historic sediments. Historic artifacts were recovered from over a meter deep. Most important, the August survey accurately predicted the location of Fort Michault, which was verified with later archaeological excavations. The success of this Fort Michault survey got me thinking about the idea of using the bucket auger as a tool for finding archaeological sites. What if the auger was six inches in diameter or eight inches in diameter? With a larger diameter auger, it'd be possible to remove a larger volume of soil and potentially collect a larger number of artifacts. So after stewing for some time on this idea of using a larger bucket auger, I decided to move ahead and try to build it. So after some computer-aided drafting, some cutting out of steel parts and welding, I cobbled together what I call the first experiment. This first auger had a bucket of 30 centimeters in diameter, or 12 inches. It could reach a depth of 155 centimeters, and it weighed 100 pounds empty. Obviously, this auger is too big and heavy to power by hand. It was designed to mount onto a hydraulic drive on a small track loader. The auger is rotated into the ground to a depth of 10 centimeters. Once the bucket is full, the rotation is reversed, which closes the bottom of the bucket so that when it's lifted out of the hole, the soil doesn't fall out the bottom. The auger is then swung outward, a trigger is released, and the bucket pivots open to empty its contents. The soil can then be screened and the auger returned to the hole for the next 10 centimeter level. This first experiment of what I call the paleo digger worked way better than I expected. It dug a perfectly round hole 160 centimeters deep. Here is what I propose to build next. The next version of the paleo digger machine will include a vertical drill mast from which the hydraulic drive will move up and down with more precision. The auger bucket will have a diameter of 50 centimeters and the target drill depth is three meters. It is my belief that this mechanical auger has the potential to significantly reduce the cost of deep archaeological testing and to greatly improve our chances of finding deeply buried Paleo-Indian sites. To document my progress in building the Paleo digger machine, I decided to launch Archaeology X. Archaeology X is in the spirit of Google X, SpaceX, and the X Prize. In mathematics, X is the unknown quantity. It's the hard problem to solve. You could say that this is my first American's moonshot project. Finding deeply buried Paleo-Indian sites is a hard problem. But if we want to advance the field of archaeology and to better understand the first Americans, we need to dig deeper.